We're going to look now at the transient response for digital control systems. And we'll start by reviewing what we know about transient response for continuous systems in order to further our analysis. So whenever we're designing a compensator or controller for a continuous system, <coughs> we use the root locus. And if we have systems of order greater than two, then we see if we can approximate a second order system. So we'll see if the system response is close enough to a second order system to where we can use those parameters for our design. You know, what we know about how the second order poles relate to settling time, peak time, percent overshoot. So here's a slide sort of reviewing that concept. And in order to be able to approximate a second order system, then our higher, order, our higher order system has to meet these criteria. Either A, the higher order poles are much farther into the left half of the S-plane than the dominant second order pair of poles. So for example, here's a third order system, and these black X's are the open loop poles, and then the root locus shows the possible closed loop poles, and so for a certain gain value, we might have these blue X's for our closed loop poles. And then a different gain value will have these X's for the same system. So these closed loop poles, P1, P2, and P3. So the system shown in figure B is going to be a second, I'm sorry, is going to be a better approximation of a second order system because the higher order pole is farther to the left than in A. And so just having a negative real part simply means that it's going to, its effect will die out faster than if we have a smaller real part. Another way that we can assume a second order response is if the closed loop zeros near the closed loop second order pair are almost canceled by the proximity of higher order closed loop poles. So C and D show that. So here we've got this system with three poles and a zero. And for one gain value, we'd have these closed loop poles, and for another gain value, we'd have these, where now P3 is closer to the zero. And so the effect of that zero is going to be mitigated by the proximity of P3. So here, this figure, this system would have a better second order, closer to a second order response than this figure. So, that's just reminding us that whenever we're designing compensators, we're assuming second order response. And in order to assume second order response, then the closed loop system has to be pretty close to a second, second order system. Hit the wrong button. Okay. Now, it's the closed loop poles, the dominant closed loop poles, what we just finished talking about, the ones closest to the imaginary axis or the dominant ones, those determine the transient response, assuming a second order response. So once we know our transient con uh, characteristics that we want, so the s say we have a desired settling time or a, a maximum overshoot that we can have, percent overshoot, then that will give us the pole locations that we want. <coughs> And so if these pole locations happen to lie on the root locus, then we can just adjust the gain. Or, and if they're not on the root locus, then we have to cascade a compensator with the plant in order to change the root locus. Uh, and, there, and, and then have the root locus intersect the poles that we want. So here are a couple figures showing the system that's not compensated and here's its response and then if we wanted the closed loop pole to be at B instead we'd add a compensator and then this would be the response. So you can see here they had the same percent overshoot but different settling time. In the next slide I'll talk a little bit about that. Again talking about continuous systems if we have, if we're looking at the S-plane and we're considering our dominant closed loop poles then any poles on vertical lines, they'll have the same settling time. 
because they have the same real part to the to the pole. So this settling a pole here would have the same settling time as a pole up here. And same with another vertical line. So a pole here would have the same settling time as a pole here. And the horizontal lines, oh, I'm going out of order. The horizontal lines are equal peak times. So the largest peak of the response would be the same for any pole on a horizontal line. And then these radial lines are constant percent overshoot. So this is constant damping along these lines here. So this is in the S plane. So you saw on the previous slide we had a pole here and then a desired pole here and they had the same percent overshoot because they're on a line of constant damping or constant percent overshoot. And you can see that this pole, like I said before, has a smaller real part so it's going to have a longer settling time than this pole. So what we want to do, oh, I got ahead of myself. So here's just a little bit more about designing a compensator. So all four of these figures are looking at one system with these three open loop poles. And here's the root locus for the uncompensated system. And if we pick a certain gain to give us a um, damping ratio of 0 0.4, then the closed loop pole will be at this spot. So negative 9.4 and 2.2 in the imaginary direction. So now we can add an open loop or we can add a an ideal zero and we the next three figures show that at different places. So here it is at minus two and the root locus has changed and so now if we're sticking with that constant percent overshoot then our new closed loop pole is going to be here, so the real part is negative 3. If we move our ideal 0 to negative 3, then we end up with a different closed loop pole, and our ideal 0 to negative 4, then we get still a different closed loop pole, because the root locus is changing. And we're designing a compensator, our gain here, we want it to be, to give us uh, a damping ratio of 0.4. So which of these three compensators is going to give us the smallest settling time? Is it going to be B with the closed loop pole at minus 3 and then J7? Is it going to be C with the closed loop pole at minus 2.4 and J5.5? Or D this? Well, the fastest settling time is the one where the response dies out quickest and so that would be in part B where we have the the most negative real part of our closed loop pole. And one other thing we can see as we're changing these ideal zeros is the farther away the farther to the left the ideal zero gets then the closer to the origin our closed loop pole gets. So what that's saying is it gets closer and closer to an uncompensated system. All right, so that's all the review for the continuous domain transient response and, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, transient response and compensator design. And the, the reason for that is because now we want to move into discrete systems and they're transient response, and then eventually into the selecting the gain and designing compensators. So this is the z-plane equivalent of those lines of constant characteristics that we saw before. So this figure transformed into the z-plane looks like this. So settling time, if we let s be some constant sigma 1 plus j omega, well, by the definition of settling time, we know that sigma 1 is negative 4 divided by the settling time. 
So we're really interested, if we're looking at settling time, we want to find the constant settling time values, then we let sigma 1 be a constant. And then so z is equal to s to the t, which is, I'm sorry, e to the st, which is e to the sigma 1 times t times e to the j omega t. And so that shows us that constant settling times in the z-plane are circles of constant radius. So all these circles here have the same settling time. So if we have a pole in the z-plane anywhere on the circle, it's going to have the same settling time. And this circle is the same settling time. And so here it is normalized with respect to the sampling period. So you can see the larger radii have a longer settling time. So here ts over t equals 20. So that means that the, sam the settling time is going to be 20 times the sampling period. And here it's only two times the sampling period. Okay, peak time. For peak time, that was a constant imaginary part in the S plane. So constant peak time means constant imaginary part. And so in the Z plane, that means a constant angle. So all these radial lines are constant peak times. And again, they're normalized with respect to the sampling period. And then damping ratio, we get these curves. So these are the constant damping ratio curves. And when zeta equals zero, we have a circle. And that's a radius one circle. So that's, if you remember from stability, that's our line of marginal stability. So any, any radius, any pole with magnitude greater than one is unstable and less than one is stable. So we're going to look a little bit more at the transient response for discrete systems and then eventually move into designing controllers in the Z-plane.